Hey, welcome to the Science Masterclass, I'm Mr. Salagaris. Today we're in for a corker. We're going to look at the respiratory system. We're going to look at the function of the organs that make it up, the organs themselves, and we're also going to look at this process called aerobic respiration. Okay, so the body's made up of different types of cells, and for these cells to survive, they need the constant supply of oxygen and glucose. For them to get that constant supply of uh, oxygen and glucose, a chemical reaction called aerobic respiration takes place. The respiratory system is responsible for that reaction. Okay, This is the formula uh, that can be used to represent aerobic respiration, where you've got glucose and oxygen reacting to produce carbon dioxide, water, and energy. Okay, Let's look at the different organs uh, that make up the respiratory system as well as the function of that. So the respiratory system, it's responsible for the exchange of oxygen in and out of the body amongst other gases. So the main structures of the respiratory system are the lungs, the trachea, and the diaphragm. So the respiratory system draws oxygen into the body, transfers oxygen to the blood, removes carbon dioxide from the blood, and then expels that carbon dioxide from the body, to put it pretty simply. Let's have a look. There's some other organs or organelles that, are, that make up this system. The nasal cavity, the alveoli, larynx, esophagus, bronchi, trachea. Um, these are all really important parts of this respiratory system, but our focus today is on the lungs um, and the alveoli. Okay, so most inhaled air enters via the nasal cavity where it's filtered, warmed, and moistened. Delicious. Uh, nostril hairs, even more delicious, filter the larger particles and mucus filters the smaller ones. The epiglottis is a flap of tissue that stops food and drink from entering into the windpipe and the lungs. Okay. The larynx also helps protect the trachea. The cilia, they're tiny like hair structures that line the entire system uh, and they also help to filter out those finer particles. So the airways branch off ending in the alveoli where the gas exchange takes place. There's around 500 million alveoli in the lungs, which have a total surface area of about 80 meters squared. The walls of the ale alveolus are only one cell thick, so they're really, really thin. There's a reason for that, um, because each of these alveolus lay close to the wall of a capillary, which is a small blood vessel, and that allows the exchange of oxygen into the lungs, well, into the bloodstream from the lungs. Okay, so that movement is caused by different levels of concentration. So where there's a high concentration moving into an area of low concentration of oxygen. So moving from the lungs where there's high concentration into the blood where there's low concentration. Okay, breathing sounds like a pretty self-explanatory thing. Here's the action. Uh, it is the action of breathing that allows the body to take in the oxygen uh, that the cells need and expel the carbon dioxide that the cells produce as waste. Okay, when breathing, the ribs move upward and outward as a result of the action of the muscles in the chest. These are called the intercostals and the diaphragm, which is like a giant balloon that sits underneath the lungs that goes up and down. The diaphragm is a sheet of muscular tissue that separates the chest from the abdomen. When it contracts, there's an increased space in the chest causing air to rush into the lungs. When breathing out, exhaling, the diaphragm then moves, forcing air out of the lungs. Okay, this is a diagram that shows that towards the bottom of each of these diagrams, you've got um, a representation of the diaphragm of when you are breathing in and breathing out. You can see how it changes up and down, allowing for that inhaling and exhaling of gases. Okay, breathing rate varies from age, physical activity, and, and mood. Uh, each breath exchanges about 500 mils of air. The vital capacity of the lungs is the maximum amount of air that can be exhaled after taking a deep breath. This is normally around 400, uh, sorry, 4,500 mils. Okay, within that exhale, you've got, um, actually this, this table here shows the inhaled air and the exhaled hair and what it's broken air um, and the different gases that make up um, make up that air as you breathe it in and exhale it okay that's it thanks for watching hey make sure you watch it again there's some bits that you missed um, this is the respiratory system today we looked at the organs aerobic respiration and the function of that system hey thanks for watching